Hey everyone, I wanted to make uh, an update video on some of the work I've been doing on the pre 1.9 one cycle ideas in the last couple weeks, um, which I've decided to, to name the void cycle as of now, because um, in order to get this version of the one cycle to work, you do have to be quite far out into the void in the end. Um, I want to be clear up front though, this video is not going to be kind of the same as uh, my other videos. I usually like to have ideas like like fully fleshed out and well designed and practiced before I kind of talk about them to make sure that they're viable. Um, this one cycle idea is not viable by any means uh, yet. The setup is not very fast, it's not resource efficient, and you have to get pretty lucky uh, for it to even work in this current form. So this is more just a, a progress and showing that, you know, um, maybe in the future, if we make a ton of updates and improvements, um, it can eventually be an actual usable strategy, but right now it's, uh, still pretty far from that. So, um, I'm going to be showing off an actual, um, like full length, uh, theoretical end fight using this, uh, idea. It's going to be just under five minutes, which is, you know, not the worst, but it, it's pretty slow. Um, but in order to understand it, there's three big, um, like tricks that we found and used in order to uh, make this possible. I'm showing footage right now of uh, me just practicing, you know, the actual one cycle, but in order to get to this um, point where the dragon is kind of charging you here, um, it takes a lot of weird tricks. So I'm going to go over those three tricks first, then we're going to uh, look at like what an actual end fight could be using this idea. Um, and then at the end, I'm kind of hoping that, um, you know, maybe some people in the community that either speed run this version or just think this is a really cool idea and, you know, want to be part of Minecraft history and make a new one cycle. Um, I'll, I'll give you some avenues to help out if you have some ideas, uh, want to contribute, um, post some videos of your own, stuff like that. So the first trick uh, used in this first iteration of the void cycle is um, an infinite charging mechanic from the dragon. Um, this was uh, first kind of brought to my attention by Sharpie Man, but I think uh, Jojo and Gaga have done some uh, work in 116 as well when the dragon is um, kind of extreme distances away from the center and island. Um, so this basically is a trick to get the dragon to stay in um, a pretty static position for long periods of time. And uh, you can see the end island way in the back there. I'm just in creative mode, hovering in the void here. But um, at first this seems like a glitch, but um, this is actually just a weird, I think kind of unintended um, coding mechanic, but this is uh, actually can be explained by um, just the dragon's code and how it's supposed to behave. So I'll, I'll show kind of an image uh, explaining why this is happening. So this is my beautiful recreation of the end dimension in pre 1.9 Minecraft. Um, this here clearly is the end island made up of end stone. And uh, here are the little obsidian pillars that spawn randomly throughout the island. Uh, this is the obsidian platform that generates when the player uh, enters the end. And uh, this platform can be covered with the um, end stone. It could be out in the void somewhere, but uh, there's always a block on that platform that generates it. Uh, 100x, 49y, and 0z. So we know those coordinates every time. Um, now, I'm not going to pretend to understand the dragon's coding and mechanics. Um, Sharpie Man has, has told me pretty much all this. Um, but from what I can understand, essentially there's a, a box uh, above the end island that dictates some of the dragon's mechanics and how it behaves. Uh, this box is from positive to negative 60 in the X and Z directions and 70 to 120 in the Y. And essentially the dragon will just uh, attempt to fly around in this box. So let's say the dragon is flying around in this box and it uh, attempts to find a target to charge. If the only valid target is one player in the end and the player is more than 150 blocks away from the dragon, uh, it will not charge the player and it will just continue flying around in this box. Now, something weird happens when the dragon is outside this box and further away from the end island. Um, the further away the dragon is, once it finishes charging a player, it actually has a chance to do another check to charge a valid target. Um, if the dragon is actually more than 150 blocks away from any point in the central box that it normally flies around in, the chance to charge is 100%. And so essentially, if the player is far enough out, the dragon will charge it, finish charging, 
begin flying back to the central island but immediately make another check to charge a valid target it will 100 percent hit that and the only valid target in the area is the player so we can essentially get the dragon to just permanently charge the player and so the question uh, is then, you know, how do we get the player and the dragon this far away from that central box um, quickly and without dying? And the answer is not very easily at all. Um, the quickest way to get away from this box is if you spawn on this um, obsidian platform is just by bridging straight back in the positive X direction. Um, the dragon needs to be at least 207 blocks in the X direction or more in order um, to charge you permanently with 100% efficiency. And so the player wants to be a little bit further back than that. So about 120 blocks uh, is where the player would need to travel. Uh, another option is to go up onto the main end island, go to a nearby uh, corner that's uh, fairly far in the X and Z direction, and just bridge out from there. Um, from a couple examples, uh, I tested this position is around 80, 55, 80 is about as good as you can do. And so you're going to use a lot of blocks because bridging diagonally is going to take um, quite a few blocks. So it ends up being 170 to get out to the required position. Uh, but for the player to traverse that distance because it's um, diagonal is only 120 blocks. So it's a pretty similar distance for the player to travel. So bridging diagonally is a little bit worse than bridging straight out, but the reason I bring it up is because uh, we have a, a new problem. Even if we do end up bridging all the way out into the void, setting up a one cycle, we still have to get the dragon out there. And so we have to travel back to the end island and get the dragon to charge us and then somehow get there without dying. And the dragon is really, really fast. And if it bumps into you during the charge at any point, you'll be knocked straight off into the void. So um, the trick that I used... Um, to be able to get the dragon out this far, uh, I'm going to call entity bumping, and I'll explain uh, what that is here. So this idea can um, essentially be used to slow the dragon down or even completely stop the dragon. And this is due to its uh, entity hitbox bumping into other entities. So either passive mobs, aggressive mobs, um, or even the player's hitbox. So um, thanks to Matthew Boland for coming in stream and kind of talking about some of the charge mechanics and uh, the numbers. And thanks to Colin for posting on the Discord, uh, doing this technique with uh, the player accidentally and uh, kind of letting us understand exactly how this happens. So entity bumping has actually been seen quite a lot in pre 1.9 speedruns, but I don't think runners uh, fully understand uh, why it happens or what's going on. So I'm gonna show a couple clips of runners doing end fights uh, where the dragon accidentally will entity bump. Um, this first one is from Silver. Uh, doing a practice end fight and you can see the dragon just kind of slightly veers off its approach uh, trajectory there for some reason so if we actually go back and slow this down we could see the reason the dragon actually does this is because of this group of endermen right here uh, touching the corner of the dragon's hitbox and actually pushing it off course a little bit making that bed explosion a little bit less damaged than it otherwise would have been this next clip is from Max, and this shows this effect uh, pretty drastically here. The dragon uh, approaches the runner uh, at the corner of its hitbox and just completely stalls and then flies away. Um, and this looks really bizarre and like it really shouldn't happen, but once we understand the dragon mechanics, um, this clip will make total sense. So the Ender Dragon in more recent versions of Minecraft, I'm um, in version 1.16 right now, shows a lot of things when you turn hitboxes on. Um, we can see this uh, large white box around the dragon. Uh, I'm referring to it as the bounding box. The small inner green boxes are the hit boxes and hurt boxes. So it's where the dragon takes damage and deals damage and knockback to the player. Um, the dragon has a um, head hitbox, which takes normal damage. The rest of these hitboxes are considered the body hitboxes and they take 25% uh, damage. So in pre 1.9 Minecraft, um, when we turn hitboxes on, the actual hitbox and hurtbox are hidden, but the bounding box is still shown. So the dragon uh, does still have head and body hitboxes, so the head does take normal damage, the body only takes 25%. But all we can see is the bounding box, which uh, is actually fine because the bounding box tells us essentially how much space the entity takes up. So I roughly measured the dragon's bounding box in this version to be 17 blocks in the X and 17 blocks in the Z direction. Um, which is interesting because from the dragon's coding perspective, this is not the box that he uses to determine if it has made a successful charge or not. It's just the box that determines how much space it takes up. 
To determine if the dragon has made a successful charge, it actually checks in a 10 block Euclidean radius around the center of the dragon. And so if it's in the charging state and there's a player's hitbox that is within this 10 block radius sphere, it determines a successful charge and it says, okay, I've done my job, I'm going to go back to flying around now. So if we actually measure the distance from the center of the dragon to the corner edge of its bounding box, um, we can actually see that this is uh, 12 blocks long. And so what this means is if there is an entity standing right outside the dragon, and uh, let's say its head hitbox has not interacted with the entity yet, um, it's actually further away than this 10 block radius to the center of the dragon. And so this entity's bounding box is actually going to collide with the dragon's bounding box. And so they're going to effectively push each other back. And this can happen with any entity, including the player. And so something interesting happens uh, with the player especially. If the dragon is charging very quickly towards the player, the bounding boxes will actually collide together and intersect. And so the dragon's head hitbox will actually end up hitting the player. The player will actually end up uh, being inside this 10 block radius and uh, the dragon will knock it back and then it will consider that a successful charge and fly away. But if the dragon is moving very slowly, the edge of the dragon's bounding box will not be able to intersect the edge of the player's bounding box, and the dragon will essentially induce uh, what's called a hover, and it will actually just hover there um, indefinitely. So uh, this entity bumping technique can be used, number one, to slow the dragon down with other entities like Enderman, if the Endermen are colliding with the corner of the dragon's hitbox. And number two, the player can actually just induce uh, an infinite dragon hover if the dragon is moving very slowly and it's at the very corner of the dragon's hitbox. So going back to this clip, we can now understand pretty easily what happens. Um, the conditions have to be pretty perfect for this, but we can see the dragon charging the player at a very sharp angle. Uh, essentially, its velocity is zero right here when its corner uh, bounding box interacts with the player, and it just kind of hovers here for a second. As soon as the player moves sideways along the bounding box, though, now it has come into that 10 block radius. Even though it hasn't interacted with the dragon's hitbox at all, um, it's within this 10 blocks, and now the dragon considers this a successful charge and flies away. So in order to use this in the actual uh, void cycle, Basically, the dragon is too fast for the player to outrun, even with speed potions or horses or whatever you can think of. And so the only way to really get the dragon out that far that we could think of so far is um, basically bridging uh, along a diagonal so that the dragon's hitbox is always uh, on a corner to where the player is running. And uh, I make little platforms here to make it easier for Enderman to spawn on this cobblestone uh, as a little platform and basically hold up the dragon by uh, entity bumping. All right, so this last and uh, final trick was brought to my attention by Pixfummy on stream. So um, shout out to him for coming up with this cool one. but. In uh, pre-1.9, a lot of times you have to do bed explosions by, you know, doing a bed and either a block here or here, and then you trigger the bed. Um, it does player damage, player knockback, and uh, block damage and fire. So it creates kind of a big issue, especially if you want to travel all the way out there in the void and uh, explode beds, you're going to be blowing up a lot of blocks. So uh, one trick that we can use is that bed explosions in 1.7 uh, actually come out from the block just ahead of the bed. I'm not sure if it's you know right here or in the center of this block, but they do come out in the front of the bed. In 1.8 and future versions, the explosion comes out from the, the bed pillow. So a trick we can actually do in 1.7, if you're playing that version, is actually just put water here. And not only does this not do uh, block damage, but it also doesn't spread fire. Uh, so now we can see if we do the bed, there's no um, block damage at all. It still does player damage and player knockback, which is good because it still damages the dragon, obviously, but it makes it so we don't have to replace any part of our platform. We don't have to use obsidian or anything like that. All right, so with those three tricks down, uh, here is, as promised, the theoretical end fight using this void cycle from start to finish. I did uh, break this fight up into three sections and saved and quit in between each one because, again, this doesn't work very frequently, so it took me many, many tries, uh, and it's it's still kind of slow. But either way, um, I'll tell you where the, the sections are. 
I enter the end here at uh, low render distance. I think all players on version uh, 1.7 should do this. If you enter the end at 5 render distance or less, the dragon doesn't actually load in. And so you can get up to the main island without getting charged. And so I use this so I don't get charged when I'm making this first bridge. Um, from here, it's just going to be bridging diagonally and making these a little platform for Endermen to spawn on to catch the dragon using entity bumping. So I'm just going to talk about uh, a couple other things, maybe the future of pre 1.9 and the end fight and stuff like that while this bridging is happening. Um, I, I did want to mention that, you know, each version of Minecraft speedrunning has different requirements uh, to finish the run. They're all pretty similar, and in, in version 1.16, really the only three requirements are uh, Ender Pearls, Blaze Rods, and Five Beds. Uh, pretty much every top runner is pretty comfortable with uh, Five Bed One Cycle, so that's really all that's absolutely necessary. Everything else in the run, like Ten Obsidian, um, you know, even Bow and Arrow if you want in that version, are just supplemental materials to help you speed up the run or make it easier, uh, but they're not requirements. In pre 1.9, there are um, two other requirements besides pearls and rods. Uh, most players prefer, uh, most top runners prefer at least seven beds going into the end fight to be comfortable, and they also require a bow and 20 arrows. Uh, I think that the end fight in pre 1.9 is just an, the last unsolved frontier of this version. I think if uh, someone can kind of figure this out to do this way better and without a bow and arrow it would just completely break the version and crack it wide open so you know when you think about the requirement of a bow and 20 arrows if you didn't have to get those items um, not only is it going to directly save you time from having to mine flint and uh, uh, kill chickens to get feathers but you are also going to have more completable runs. And that's the hidden value of having less requirements in a speed run is that, uh, you know, not only are you going to save time in the run, but your PB is naturally just going to get lower because you have more completable runs every day uh, in one session. And I can pretty much guarantee you that multiple world record pace runs in this category have been lost due to not getting enough arrows and not finding chickens. Um, it, it just happens a good amount of the time when you have that many requirements. You're going to miss one eventually. Um, here is the end of the platform that I'm building with a pretty simple setup. Uh, just put water in front of the bed, and then I use um, five endstone here because endstone uh, will not get broken by the dragon. Um, so you can stay on that platform uh, and get hit by the dragon and be okay still standing there. Um, there was a there was a cut right there because I tried this attempt multiple times. So here's just going back to the to the main island to get dragon aggro, um, and I'm just gonna wait for the dragon. Um, an average of 30 seconds it takes from this position for the dragon to charge you, and then run all the way back. So you know if someone can find even if this one cycle method isn't used in the end, if someone can find a method that uses seven beds or less and gets them a sub-3 end fight 75% of the time or more, this category is going to be way different, and sub-20 pace runs are um, going to be much, much easier and very realistic. So that's kind of the hope, even if this specific one-cycle method doesn't get used. Um, I have hope for this category. So this is just me running back um, to the platform, and unfortunately, I mean, cue the sad music here. I do mess up this one cycle. I am only about 50% success rate with the one cycle from here. It was a little slow, so unfortunately, I do mess this up, and uh, this is the next attempt directly after I spawn in a dragon, so this is the very next attempt. I do end up getting it on this one. So as I'm finishing off the one cycle here, um, I do you know want to say again in this current form it isn't really usable one cycle, but it's really cool ideas, and I'm really hoping uh, people from the community can kind of come together and we can maybe make this a thing one day. So um, if you've got ideas and you want to help out, uh, you can always post in the comments below. Uh, I should always check those. I also do uh, streams and I uh, have a Discord. You can post videos or messages in there. I'll always check on those. So I'll put those links in the description below if you want to help out and come up with stuff. And uh, with that, hope you enjoyed.